Hi, and thank you for joining us for this video presentation. We are in Enid, Oklahoma at Oxbow's calcining plant. This plant was inherited by Oxbow as part of the Great Lakes Carbon acquisition in 2007. Here we met with Dan Rosendale, VP of Operations, and his staff to get a tour of the calcining process and also to get their perspective on the Oracle implementation. Oxbow purchased this facility from Great Lakes Carbon in 2007. We process petroleum coke in our kilns to purify its chemistry and improve its density. Our primary customers are the aluminum, titanium dioxide, graphite, plastic, and steel industries. This plant has the capacity to produce 500,000 tons of high quality calcined petroleum coke each year. We are extremely proud of our safety, environmental compliance, and quality performance. One of the key reasons for our success at Enid is a stable workforce. Our team at Enid has an extremely good work ethic and an average seniority of greater than 20 years. We normally take several different components blended together to create a blend for all of our customers. The material is pulled from each pile and transferred by front end loader to a scraper. The scraper then takes the material to the shakeout area, which has got grates on the ground and discharges through the bottom to a series of collection belts that run the material up to uh, the raw silos. Two raw silos for each kiln. We have three kilns. Two kilns are dedicated to anode usage, and one kiln is dedicated to an industrial products market. The lab provides the production department a blend to use for a particular customer. Here in the lab, we can test for the sulfur and the metals using our X-ray fluorescent machine that will allow us to, to test metals down to a parts per million level. We can also test density of uh, different materials as well as volatile matter and ash and several other tests as well. The raw silos each hold about 300 tons a piece. We pull from both silos to prepare a more homogeneous blend and we feed that to the kilns. It's fed to the upper portion of the kiln where it removes the moisture first and then as it reaches the midsection of the kiln it starts devolatilizing. So all the volatile matter is removed from the material. Then we densify the material at the discharge end of the kiln. Then drops into a cooler. For cooling purposes, we target between 300 and 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We unload the material either to rail car or store it in a silo for further processing. On the monitor, we can watch the raw coke go into the kiln. And we can also monitor the kiln temperature, the drafts, the stack temperature, belt temperatures, and what's running, what's not running. On the trend chart, I'm able to monitor the last two hours of the kiln temperature, the belt temperature, the cooler temperatures, and the raw feed. This is our crushing and sizing uh, facility, and in this facility, we produce approximately 30% of the overall product that comes out of the facility. Of that 30%, 15% is, is bagged and 85% is bulk loaded, whether it be by pneumatic trucks or uh, bulk rail cars. The bagging and the bulk material is both screened and sized through our plant. Uh, we have the ability to crush and then uh, separate that product based on customer specifications. We also spent some time in the maintenance shop and warehouse to understand a little bit more about MAPCON, the Computerized Maintenance Management Program, and how this interfaces with Oracle. They have a fairly massive warehouse here with over a million dollars worth of parts, and MAPCON tracks all those parts for them. So with that application, they, they are able to be ready to maintain any piece of equipment, do a repair at any time with the knowledge that they have those parts in stock. To keep that MAPCON system up and running, there was a need to integrate that with the Oracle application. We'll be ready in time to have MAPCON pass its inventory purchase requests over to Oracle, and where those purchase requests will be made into purchase orders. Those purchase orders will be then sent to the vendors, and the vendors will ship the product to the, to the customer here in Enid, Baton Rouge, Port Arthur, and Lamont, Illinois. So, those parts will be received in Oracle and those transactions will be sent back to MAPCON letting MAPCON know that we do indeed have the product on hand. Then when the part eventually gets used, that issue transaction will be sent back to Oracle and 
we will have completed the loop. The tracking and maintenance activities and costs is going to be enhanced in Oracle by improving our ability to meet our performance goals. In this, we expect that Oracle is going to help us accelerate our purchasing and ordering process of approvals uh, so that we can expect that when we have parts on the shelf or uh, we can expect to, when we're going to get them on arrival to plan and schedule maintenance uh, work effectively to uh, keep the plant up and running and producing code. Our current system as far as for tracking and interfacing MapCon into, into Oracle won't change that much as far as out of the inventory side because they'll still take inventory stock out out of the inventory of, of MapCon. What will change is the, the interface into Oracle for reordering uh, items for the stock or, or warehouse. That will change because that will be an interface or an upload into Oracle, uh, which is, will be, it's a tracking, tracking system. One aspect that the MapCon Oracle interface will be better is it'll help us more efficiently track our projects. Um, right now, tracking a project with multiple activities uh, can be really cumbersome, keeping track of all of the costs. Currently, we're using MapCon and a form of spreadsheets to track these costs. With Oracle, each project will have an Oracle, uh, Oracle project number, and that project number will maintain all the costs within that project where we can report on it, and that reporting will be real-time also. Uh, this will help all of us manage all of our projects and be more efficient. We look forward to the implementation of Oracle from a project cost management and improved report capability point of view. The benefits um, of the purchasing process going to Oracle would essentially be standardizing across the board so that we could look at any plant and um, compare how each one is doing, as well as the management and tracking of the purchasing. As the engineering manager, I'm responsible for capital projects uh, and improvements that are done in the facility. Oracle should give us uh, real-time, up-to-date uh, information concerning costing of the projects. In addition to that, it should streamline approval processes for, for capital projects uh, so that the, uh, the scope or the package of work that we, we compile uh, for approval uh, can be uploaded to the software and then viewed by everyone who needs, it, needs to see it in order to approve the, the, the project. It's hats off to the, to the Oracle crew because they have very much improved the Oracle system to where it is so much easier to get around in now. It's, uh, it, it's, there's, there's not as much anxiety with a new system to learn. Also looking forward to the support uh, that we've, we, we're going to receive. I've been told that there's going to be someone on site to assist us with the transition on the go live date. Uh, in addition to that, there's online help uh, as well as uh, phone calls that can be made to corporate to, uh, to receive any help that we need. I think all the Oracle training has been really effective. Uh, I think we've all been through several Oracle training classes and have several more on our calendars. And the communication about the whole Oracle project has been very good and communicated through everybody. Uh, I think everybody feels really comfortable with Oracle. We hope you've enjoyed this video presentation. As we get closer to go live, we will be ramping up our video production. Please look for our Go Live support video due to be published in mid-March. In this video, you will find information for where to get support after Go Live. We would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your support and cooperation as we approach the finish line.